Hello and welcome back to 2064 Read Only Memory. I'm Bon Bonny Boy and your host and we are at home. Now we know that Hayden is dead, unfortunately. Okay, we can now either follow Tom Cat's lead to KCOB or Fairlight's lead to Melody's home. It depends on what you want our focus to be on in terms of tracking Hayden's trail. Should we follow the media or the tech? Up to you where to go first. Hmm. Okay. It's dead, Jim. Oh no. Okay, um... Hmm. Hmm. I think we go first to the flower mansion. <sighs> what? Something's wrong? What is it? I don't know. Why do you feel the need to pester me so? I'm just thinking. Give me a moment. All right. All right. Sorry. Back on task. Yep. Is there anything you'd like to know before we head inside? Ah, uh, give me a run rundown of Flower Cybernetics. Flower Cybernetics was established in the early 2000s by Melody's mother, Antonella. Okay. It started out developing cutting-edge medical tech, including advanced prosthesis and nanoparticle diagnostic and treatment technologies. They were vastly successful when they perfected the first synthetic nerve mesh, allowing direct connection and control between the nervous system and a cybernetic prosthesis. Oh, interesting. The majority of their early projects were defense technologies for the American military. Developing ruggedized military prosthesis for use on injured soldiers, and then eventually electively for special forces. Mm -hmm. This research line culminated in the development of brain-controlled androids as shock troops, long since barred by international law. Melody took over the company from her aging mother, and she fought against developing further military hardware from that point on. She pushed the company to use the BCA technology for the company's original goals of medical advancement, as well as developing the first direct link virtual reality implants. Wow. So good. The company is largely successful on a global scale, despite continued legislative movement against extensive cybernetic use, especially brain implants. Mm-hmm. What can you tell me about Melody? Hmm, not a whole lot. She's largely private, in contrast to her mother's penchant for courting a media circus. Several biographies of former flower executives show her as intensely passionate about demilitarizing the company to the point of absolute viciousness in the boardroom. Mm -hmm. But it's been a mm -hmm. long time since her days of fighting for the company, and she's since stepped away from the helm. There's talk that she's lost her spine in her old age, but... Well, I take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> she may have retreated from the corporate battlefield, but you don't change the entire direction of a company as large as Flower if you're a quitter. That's right. Stay on your toes. Didn't Yannick say he and Melody had a falling out? He did, and I can't shine much light on that. I know that System 1 worked with Flower to help develop the first operating systems for the Direct Link Virtual Reality implants, so perhaps it happened during that time. Also, Flower eventually went with a different company for future models of the implant, but there was never any public talk of a personal falling out between the heads of the companies. I'll scrape the mesh for more rumors, but they'll only be that, rumors. I can do my best to parse fact from fiction, but it blurs too much for me to be sure what's real. Ah, oh, I understand. Let's go ahead and head in. No time like the present, then. Yep, yep. Air statues, flowers. Small-scale beauty statues guard the entrance to the mansion. Pet it. 
You can't take it. Not marble, nor the glide mountain. <laughs> the dose. These tall shrubs could line the estate of a Victorian duke. They're that stuffily pleasant to look at. Doorbell. The dark wooden door make up the mansion's entrance man uh, entrance way. A small foyer can be seen through the muddled glass. Window line the front of the house and broadcast the hinds of an ex. Early designed then inside. Okay. It looked like the buzzer for an apartment complex. She needs one of these just for one house. Park. You can't use the speaker without ringing the bell. Okay. Who is that? Uh. What? Um. Hi. Is Melody home? This is beer. <laughs> so. What? Rawr. <laughs> what? Hmm. Um. Your guess is as good as mine. Mine says we can go in. Yeah. Should we? I think so. Yes. Enter. Mm-hmm. Swanky, what is this for a ward? <laughs> I have been trying to increase my usage of colloquialisms. Is Swanky too out of date? I would say yes. It's certainly before my time. Oh, Miss Flores! Excuse us for the intrusion. My name is Turing. Oh, I know who you are. Hmm? Explain. I know you don't like Dr. Fairlight very much, but I assure you there is a situation. Fairlight? Hmm. I didn't realize Hayden's research had become a charity case. Though I suppose little boy Yannick will throw money at anything that raises his profile on the mesh. Wait, you know Hayden? Also, we actually only just met Dr. Fairlight yesterday. Oh, that's too bad. Now Pat won't have to eat you. Oh. What? Though I'm not sure your gears would have been good for his digestion. Actually, madam, I'm not comprised of gears. Well, either way, he's on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> this philosophy is how I lead my life. Sometimes you eat the bear, and sometimes the bear, well... He eats you. Do you understand? Not really. Hmm. I don't have all day to entertain you, Turing, nor your new friend. Not even for Hayden. You don't have time to waste if you're going to find him either. Right. Um. Gardening room? Okay. American model Rom is tending to the garden. Hmm. What is this? A large climate controlled globe tower is in the launch. It has some lovely in season plants inside. Fountain. A huge marble fountain adorns the country uh, courtyard. Its please bubbling sound can just barely be heard over the TV and outdoor ambience. A pair of white window doors are set open in the back of the room, leading to a plush garden. Room control. A room control monitor is fixed onto the back wall of the room. The temperature is set to low. It's freezing. Watch it. Only Madame Flores, the team of techno uh, archaeologists, could figure out how to make this fossil run. <laughs> Another room. An amped uh, emblem on its side. It sits patiently uh, near pet in a sort of ambient sleep mode, playing light instrumental music. Touch. Like the high stakes socialite uh, relationship, it monitors the uh, extremely delicate. Can we talk? No. Can we talk to this? Units are designed to remain in sleep mode until reactivated only by its owner's voice. 
depart. A thin string of steam escapes the delicate sprout. The headling of the teapot is strictly the domain of the whole servants, at least in home, uh, homes of this class. Strawberries. The biggest strawberries you have ever seen are assembled in a china bowl on the coffee table. Take it. Look too good to eat. That might be the point. Cat. Is it the real cat? The most regular looking robotic cat in the world sits prim and proper on the painting chair. Pet it. Get the cat a pet. The name on her collar says Lily. Oh. Pet. Don't crowd the cat. Robot felines are double humorless. Nice couch. A plush purple fainting chair dominates the room. Melody keeps unusual company. Mm-hmm. Ursus Maritimus, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. That An ice bear. Why the temperature controls are set so low in here. Yeah, definitely a polar bear. I wasn't aware you knew the scientific name of the species. Ooh, has my interest in proper nomenclature started to rub off on you? Hmm, he's a white bear, Turing. What else could it be? Plenty. Have you heard of a kermode bear, also known as a spirit bear? Or he could be a white phase black bear, or even a pisley. Uh, no. But he's not. It's a polar bear. Okay. Ed. Ed is Melody's butler and not yours. He will offer his services when and only when his mistress permits. Can we talk to him? So, and stuff. <laughs> uh, funny. Melody Flores, the nano machine Harris, and the owner of the Flores Cybernetics Group. Better. Try again when you have a trust fund or hold the majority of a Fortune 500 company. Mm, okay. If you were one of Fairlight's worker bees, you wouldn't have made it through the door. So why are you here to badger me about poor Hayden? You have me at a disadvantage, Ms. Flores. You seem far ahead of us on this matter. Yeah, that's Just strange. Just call me Melody, darling. And of course. But I'll share a secret or two with you. Please? I have so many questions. Do you know what's happened to Hayden? I wish I didn't. Maybe you don't want to either. We already know it. Please, Melody. Any information you might have. We haven't had access to any of his research notes and couldn't track down any collaborators he may have been working with. Mm-hmm. Perhaps if we know more, we might be able to nail down a solid motive. Well, I don't know if I can speculate on that beyond the usual corporate infighting. Not that Parallax is known for that, of course. We had been catching up recently, and he mentioned feelings of being watched. He started to worry he had been discussing your development with the wrong people. When he stopped returning my calls, and now that you've shown up with a total stranger, it becomes clear what happened. I... I see. Can you tell us anything else about his disappearance? Oh, I'm afraid not, dear. I've been around long enough to know what's coincidence and what isn't. Hmm. We were hoping you might be able to shine some light on my origins. Fairlight mentioned that you had worked with Hayden in the past. Yes, he did. I see Hayden didn't neglect curiosity in your personality makeup. Mm. Well, you and I haven't properly met, but considering how often Hayden badgered me for design schematics of Flower's latest neural implants, I might as well be your aunt. I'll we'll bet. go with that. Okay. I wouldn't mind being an aunt. Even to a blue-headed robot. <laughs> I'm touched, Melody. Yeah, you should. Well then, I'm willing to answer your questions for now. How did you help Hayden with Turing? What's the story between you and Fairlight? Hmm. Indeed, I don't see the connection between your company and Hayden's research into machine sapience. 
Oh, Hayden wasn't researching machine sapiens. At least not primarily. Mm -hmm. Not to diminish the importance of your creation, Turing. But it's best you know the truth. What is the truth? Hayden is mainly interested in developing a way to transfer human consciousness into a machine matrix. <laughs> okay. You can see why neural implants would obviously be an integral part of that. Oh, I didn't realize. How would Turing's development help with digitizing the human mind? The concept of transferring the human mind into a computer has been an attractive goal for decades. Functional immortality is... powerful lure. Hmm. The brain is an immensely complicated machine. And even though we know the right buttons to push to make pictures show up, we still can't replicate the entire thing as a technological construct. Even with the virtual reality implants, we're really just relying on the brain's ability to make sense of nonsensical signals. Mm. So Hayden decided the best way to make a machine more like the human brain would be to work in the opposite direction. Instead of mimicking how the human brain worked, he started writing code that mimicked the functioning of the human mind. Mm -hmm. Think of it like convergent evolution. Two species adapt in similar ways, but on completely different continents. Hayden is a crack programmer when it comes to information collating. It's why Parallax hired him when they did. So he wrote a bunch of self-modifying learning algorithms that were, <laughs> frankly, baffling and let them loose. Poke and prod them here and there to make sure they value the same things humans do. And we eventually end up with you, Turing. Interesting. Hayden never revealed any of this to me. I imagine he's pretty tight-lipped. Mm -hmm. You were the first prototype he considered a real success, and he was afraid of contaminating your development before he had a chance to make good observations. Can you avoid your involvement, please? If you can even call it involvement. It's a small city, and if you're in the tech sector, you are never more than two degrees removed from anyone else. Mm. When he started looking into this pet project of his, he came right up to my door and demanded access to the research logs behind our earlier implants. Cheeky, but it was impactful and disruptive, as they like to say around here. I couldn't care less about Flower's patents anymore, so I gave him what he wanted, just to see what he would do. I'm frankly more impressed than I expected I would be. But, <laughs> don't tell him that. Don't worry. I won't. Oh, that was a compliment, dear. Um, Ed wasn't invested in Turing's development. I didn't say that. Hayden was quite interested in Turing, even if he is just a step to further research. I... In fact, he was preparing to publish his findings involving Turing. And I know it's going to make one heck of a splash in the scientific community. Oh yeah. See, the most impressive part about you, Turing, is that you're surprisingly stock. I assure you, Melody, my construction involves only the latest and greatest in ROM prototype technology. It is. Exactly. You're not off the shelf, but you're still just a souped-up ROM, more or less like every other one out there. Your personality algorithms are impressive, but they don't require some new space-age technology to work. Hayden is going to propose that human consciousness transference does not require special brain-like hardware architecture, but merely the right software wrapper to interface with the hardware. Much like how you function. Hmm. hmm. I suppose that is correct. Still, my 
my personality matrices do take up substantial amounts of my processing power. Wouldn't custom hardware have capabilities that better serve such a demanding specialized task? That's a good question. Sure. There's still plenty of reason in trying to make a computer that works just like a human brain. Efficiency is an important part of that. Mm -hmm. But if Hayden can emulate the human mind in existing technology, it means we can start the immortality now, rather than waiting for hardware to catch up with Hayden's software. Uh, yeah. Frankly, I'm not terribly interested in living forever, but there's more than enough people who are. Thank you for this, Melody. Yeah, thank you very much. I understand so little of my origins. Well, I'm sorry I don't know more of the specifics. Hayden kept me up to date on his progress, but only in the vaguest of ways. If you can hunt down his notes, I'm sure they'll tell you more. Of course, we'll keep looking. Now, perhaps we could ask some other questions? Sure, sure. Hmm. What's the story between you and Fairlight? Oh, hell, that old bastard and I have been flashing daggers at each other for the better part of 20 years. I contracted out the software development for our first-gen Direct Link VR Neural Implants to System 1. <laughs> Things were going great, but after the first models sold like gangbusters, Yannick tried to get into bed with me. Literally. <laughs> I turned him down. Very politely, I might add. And then, suddenly all of the cooperation between our companies dried up. We've been at it back and forth ever since. I'd be damned careful about trusting him if I were you. Yeah, thought so. And he'll do anything he can to get what he wants. Still... I suppose if he tried again now, <laughs> I might not turn him down. <laughs> um, okay. It would be fun to needle him about me still having my own company when he doesn't have his. <laughs> oh, that's all about. Like in Futurama, the old professor and the mom. <laughs> okay, that's everything. Good. Thank you. I can get back to my retirement. Yep, you can. Thank you for your time, Melody. We'll be in touch later. Yep. Oh, one more piece of information for you, if you'd like it. Uh, yes, please. I've got the contact info for a Vincent Mensa, who I think might be of help to you. Vincent was working more closely with Hayden inside Parallax, mostly on his company-approved research on data collating algorithms for the mesh. I'll send him a message and ask him to meet you somewhere. He owes me a favor anyway, and might be able to give you some more information on anything else Hayden may have been working on. All right, that would be great. That would be fantastic, Melody. Yes. Perhaps Golden Gate Park. Be careful, Turing. I don't like Fairlight's stench all over this scenario. Don't show him too many of your cards. This euphemism is unfamiliar to me. Mm, you're in the mesh, then. Don't tell him anything if you can. Fairlight is more dangerous the more he's informed. Yep, yep, I thought so. Thank you, Aunt Melody. Wish us luck. He was too kind, too polite to us. Can one truly use an open door? What is this? The latest episode of Media Blitz is going into the story details of a new teen actor's island love affair with a local politician's daughter. <laughs> Media Blitz disabled touch interactivity on their show after the appearance of their new host, a former swimming champion, led to thousands of screens being fondled into disrepair. <laughs> I thought so. Okay. And let's leave. Thank you. Und so hat sie all deinen Schaden um 10% erhöht für nur 30%. Äh. Jetzt verdoppelt sie den Schaden von anderen 
Standardangriff Plants and such thing. What is this? A uh, corporation office building employ a pretty fancy interactive screen out front. If they can keep it outdoors, the electrical work in it must be on another level. Hmm. Door is automatic. You don't need to wonder if you push or pull. Oh, cool. No one is available at this moment. We apologize for the inconvenience. Oh, we only can... Ah. Okay. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. There is this. Hmm. More trees. These trees are genuine, real roof trees. These became all the rage back in the 40s. Ugh, I don't like this. We can't talk to them. That sucks. But first, we will save because there is no auto save. So just save here. Yes. Continue. And now, give me water. Hello again. Have you come back for some of my cool, refreshing water? Yes. please uh what happened here a shark doodle of the police room that some kids drew it looks like some other kids got their artistic expression out there on the poor police room what happened to you The spray paint isn't coming off, and you'll probably irritate them more if you start petting. Hmm? Who is there? I cannot see a thing. I shall make a note to request more street lamps in this park. This is much too dark an area. Okay. Yep, it's still broken. You'd rather have a mango hassy anyway. Hassy. Okay, do we talk to her now? Eh, him. Sorry. There is guy. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, let's do it. We've never seen this person and they appear to be waiting for somebody. Perhaps this is who you're supposed to meet. I think so. Can I help you? Maybe? I, I don't really have time to talk. I'm waiting for someone. Yeah, us. Oh good! You're Melody's people. Yep, yep. Do you have everything that I asked for? Uh, there must be some miscommunication. Melody said that you would be able to provide us with some information about Hayden Weber's projects within Parallax. He has gone missing, and any information we get may be useful. Damn that old woman! What she said. What? We had a deal! She promised me, and I'm not giving up anything until I get what I need. What do you need? I already know Hayden is missing. Why else would I be willing to sell corporate secrets to Flower? This was my chance to get out of the city. Instead, she sends the two of you, hat in hand with nothing. <sighs> I'm assuming you're Hayden's little pet AI. Hey. Insulting. Yes. But accurate. Look. I'm sorry to come off callous. I I do want to help. Hayden was a colleague and a friend, and I want to know he's okay. But I also need help getting the hell out of Neo SF, and now. My info is my leverage, and it's not for free. I'll just have to find another buyer. Maybe after I make another deal, I'll be able to pass it to you. Perhaps uh, he could assist you? My friend here is a terrific journalist. Being skilled at hunting down people and information is part of the job. Uh, I don't know. 
Look, I need a hundred thousand credits, an untraceable car, and a fake passport for me and my wife, Francesca. Oh. If you can get me all okay. that, I'll give you anything you want. Hayden's research notes, what I know about Parallax, my company's security credentials, whatever. If you're really sure journals can come up with that kind of stuff in one day. Mm, we might be able to do that. Might? Do you mind answering some other question first? Dear God, I'm doomed. Yep. Melody only gave us a rough <laughs> sketch of what you need. The more you can tell us about the situation, the sooner we can fulfill your request. Uh, sure, as long as it isn't the juicy stuff. What do you do for Parallax? I'm the head applications engineer for their data analysis division. Or maybe was, is what I should be saying. If Hayden is the big brain who comes up with the math that runs the search algorithms, I'm the guy who figures out how to collect and apply the data that we get. We've worked pretty closely for years, but he's head and shoulders above me as far as theory goes. Hayden built a fully independent machine intelligence in his spare time. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to bash myself here. I'm a good software engineer, probably one of the best. But machine intelligence? In a form factor like yours? Now that blows my mind. We've got full immersion in virtual reality, yet most people would still call you science fiction. Mm, if you say so. Why are you so adamant about getting out of NeoSF? Because Parallax is rotting from the inside out. Hayden going missing is the last straw, and it's a big ass straw. There is. Put this without giving it away. There's a new project about to roll out, and it's going to change everything about how Parallax does their business worldwide. Since the launch of the MeshNet, we've had some board shakeups, and the people at the top are different from the ones who've previously run the company. The altruism the company displayed in the past is gone. They're harder, more ruthless, and more concerned with profits and power than ever before. Not just richest company in the valley power either. Real power. My guess? Parallax got rid of Hayden because he was about to do something that would get in the way of that. Uh -huh. If they're willing to get rid of the brightest mind on their payroll, what's to stop them from getting rid of me? There's a half dozen people who could do my job. So I'm getting out before I accidentally step on the wrong person's toes and end up at the bottom of the bay. Do you know anything about Hayden's disappearance? Nothing concrete. I probably wouldn't have noticed anything out of the ordinary. I mean, Hayden goes out for a couple days all the time, right? Conferences and guest teaching. He doesn't exactly share his itinerary with me. I tried asking around and no one will say anything. Hmm. If he had jumped ship, went to a different company, it would be the talk of the week at the water coolers. Instead, dead silence. Thankfully, he allowed me to keep backups of most of his work, simply because I cross-referenced it so much, he didn't like having it all in one place anyway. Bring me what I asked for, and I'll tell you more. Mm, okay, thank you. We'll go get those things for you. I need to make some calls, and this park rom is fun. I want to poke at it a bit. If you do manage to get what I need, bring it here today, and you'll get anything you want. Forwarding photos and info for the passports to touring now. Hmm. And... I really hope you can do this. I I'd also rather give it to you than so. some other corporation anyway. See you soon. We have to talk to Fairlight, right? I'm not quite sure where to get fake passports or an untraceable car. Me neither. The only shady folks we know are those punks who vandalized Hayden's apartment. Mm, that's I right. I doubt they could point us in the right direction, but a long shot is better than no shot. They might agree to help us in repayment for the damage done to the apartment. They seemed remorseful. We should check Market Street for them, in case they regularly hang out there. As for the rest, perhaps Dr. Fairlight or Melody could spot us the credits. That certainly hmm. is no small amount, but is unlikely to cause much consternation for either of them, assuming they are as dedicated to helping as they claim. Melody is assumably home as usual, and Fairlight did let us know he'd be at the hospital. We could ask either of them for assistance. Up to you to decide which would be a better course of action. Wow. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. I just recommend. I appreciate your support. But that's it for now. Have a nice day. Have a good night. Have a good fight. And see you next time. Bye.